So says the Mishnah Maseches, but we will We will restart from the Mishnah, and this year's Lil Nishma. So we have Menachem and Akiva. There is here tomorrow, Mir Tashem, in honor of Rabbi Simeon, son of Jokai. And we are now Erev Lag Bomer event tonight, 8.15 tonight in Elon Park. So we're going to have a very nice Medura from the show. And we are learning this Lord Nishmas of Imerum Nachim and Akiva Rus Basholem Sorobas Moishe Ve Le Refuas Dvoiro Bas Rus. Okay, and Chaim. Okay, Shmuel Avram, when you this. Sorobas Nachama. It says the Mishnah. The Mishnah basically deals with how far, literally and figuratively, how far do you have to go if you stole someone's money? And we talk here also about the additional factor that the person also, the one who stole, was also Nishba Lesheker, made a false shvua <coughs> on the matter and just swore in the name of Hashem that he did not steal. Then came out that, well, he did. He admitted that he did steal and he lied with Shua. That's bad news. So he has to pay the amount that he stole, let's say a thousand shekels, plus, <clears throat> let's say, a fifth, which may be 200. Now, yeah, whatever. So now he has to pay that. A goizel is chaveroi, shve pruta. If a person stole from his friend even a much smaller amount than what I mentioned, he stole even shve pruta, eight ago, even that, obviously more, needless to say. And he swore, you have to chase that person, the, the victim, the Nigzal, even to Modai, even to the end of the world. He went to Thailand, you have to fly all the way to Thailand. And the Pashtas, at this stage, we think, and we are right, according to Tosas. By the way, this entire year, from beginning to end, I'm explaining according to Tosas, not according to Rashi. Rashi is very difficult. If you want to, I'm saying, look more into it and different before Shim, do your own homework. This is an absolutely purely toastless day. Even if it costs more, and that stays that way, which means a ticket to Thailand costs, I don't know how much, but let's say it costs, I don't know, 4,000 shekels, and you stole 10 shekels, we say, okay, mister, 4,000 shekels, you're going to go and pay a ticket 4,000, and you go with a 10 shekel coin and give it to him. Well, today, I guess it would be easier because you have bank transfers, and you have Bitcoin, and you have this coin, fine, but co conceptually, you have to actually make sure that it goes into his proper hands. And although shlichus usually works, over here we say, and that was, by the way, a mistake I made, I mean, because I didn't know this was, means that if the man has a son that's been visiting Israel, that happens many times, and then he goes back to Thailand, I cannot give it to his son or even to a shlich and say, ah, you're going to Thailand? Oh my, great. Here's the 10 shekels. Go give them to your father. And Assad says, okay, well, what's wrong with that? Well, you could do that. When we say don't give it to Assad, it doesn't mean it's a prohibition like don't eat chazir. It means to say that you are not completely potter, which means if the son will lose the 10 shekels somewhere, you know, between the duty-free and the shul in the, in the airport, or somewhere in the airplane or somewhere in Thailand, he'll be uh, knocked, then what? Then it's still the achrayas of the gazlan, yeah? In other words, just to give it to any shliach whatsoever is not good enough. I have to make sure it gets to his proper heads. If Enochinami, his son, made it safe and sound to Thailand, somewhere there in Bangkok where the man lives, and really gave it to him, then the bakasha. But you cannot, uh, you know, have sigh of relief. Oh, I brought it to his son, now it's their problem. No, the Christ responsibility still stays with you until it actually got there to his own hands. So just giving to the son, as opposed to other areas of aloha, which I described yesterday, that does not work. You really have to make sure it goes to his hands. How aval? Oh, is there any hope? Like, excuse me, the konas shavim. We have the konas shavim all over the place, right? We always try to accommodate for the thief to do tshuva. And this is a man who does want to do tshuva, and we say that no, we say being very strict with him. Pay a ticket to New Zealand. I don't know what. Yeah, what's going on over here? Says the Mishnah. This line was uh, two hours work, basically, we had yesterday. Noisen l'shlech beizdin means as follows, according to Toys. If you have a beizdin, which is closer than Thailand, let's say you live in, uh, you live in a place where there's no beizdin. You live in a place with no beizdin, you live in Mali. 
Mali, I don't think there's a basin in Mali that's in the North Africa, not very north in the Sub-Sahara. Yeah, you live in Mali and that's underneath Algeria and Morocco and you live in Mali. Now there's no basin in Mali. So now what can you do? Now Chachamim made it a little bit easier for you. If you want to fly from Mali to Thailand, that's very, very far. Israel is closer to Mali than Thailand is, yeah? Now, Chachamim says, you know, instead of going to Modai, which is all the way, which is $1,000 away, you can take it to the nearest place where there is based in. Get me? That's Toysfus, yeah? Take it to the nearest place where there's based in. And based in have their shluchim who often go from here to there. They go for Gitin, they go for Kiddushin. You go to the closest based in, which may be in Eretz Yisrael, even in Chutz Eretz, yeah? And make sure that the shliach goes. Oh! And then it's already out of your uh, out of your responsibility because Beisdin made a special takana that their own shlichim are like responsible people, and they said you either go to Modai, the end of the world, or the closest Beisdin. However, however, according to Toisfus, it does not solve the money problem completely. If you stole ten shekels, you have two options: either pay five hundred dollars, get her to soil, or pay it to the Beisdin. Or go pay thousand dollars and give it to the actual guy who lives further away, or whichever one is closer. Yeah, if you live closer to Thailand, the Bakasha, you don't have to go to Beisdin. Basically, either you go to his own place, it costs a lot, or you go to a nearer place which costs less for you, but you still have to, says Toysfus, if that is the case, that may be, you may always end up paying more money for the actual trip than the actual theft. And the Mishnah is not easy with that. Let's remember, who are we talking about over here? Not a regular Ganav. A regular Ganav is just not the issue now. What are we talking about? We're talking about a person who Ganav with lied Shvua Shekel. Very good, Yitzchok. He lied Lashekel with Shvua. Not some lying, you know, a white lie, you know, uh, you have a nice tie kind of lie. Yeah, he is Mamish Nishma Lashekel. So that person we treat very harshly. And we say you either go all the way to Modai or the closest based in and make sure, or we trust based in that they will send their shliach. But it may always involve more money, according to Toys List, more money than the actual theft. And next time before you lie, and you nish Belasheke, which is a terrible of error, think twice, don't cry to me now. I don't have a thousand dollars. Thank you. That's that's the, and we stay with that, according to Toys. The emace, if he died. The victim, the Nigzal, died. Yachzil Yoshov, you have to give it back to his heirs, to his children, whoever inherits from him, even if they live in Papua New Guinea. Go all the way there. Nosan Loi continues the Mishnah. Although the punishment is for Nishbal Shekel, here comes something very funny. Nosan Loi is a Keren, Vlan Nosan Loi is a Choymish. Let's say he gave him the Keren, the principal he returned, but the Choymish he didn't. The extra fifth, what does he have to give extra fifth? That's a penalty for lying l'shekel. So let's say he gave the basic amount that he stole. He st I stole a thousand, I'm giving you a thousand. Ah, the extra 200? And then, then I don't believe in these things. I don't, no, he didn't give him. Or, let's say the victim gave, was Moichel, forgave him for the care and says, you know, the thousand shekels I forgive you, but the 200 I don't. You lied to me. That is a principle of me. So he owes him what? Only the choymesh, right? Okay. Let's say the victim, the Nigzal, forgave him for both. Yeah, he already wavered both Karen and Choymesh, except for an amount that's less than Shveh Pruta. Don't ask me why. He says, I mochel everything except for seven Azorot. I'm following you. By the way, you know that it fluctuates. Every day changes the Shveh Pruta. I'm sticking to eight Azorot because that's what you told me. So you have to read every day in the newspapers the worth of silver. According to that, we measure it. Yeah. So if the person, the Ganev, <coughs> the Ganev Shakran, owes less than Shveh Pruta Bekeren, which means if he does not owe him the Keren, the principal, he, even if he owns him, owes, if he, even if he owes him, the Chomesh does not have to go. Meaning, it's very interesting, the cause for having to go all the way to the end of the world is because Nishbal Shekel. But if the Keren is out of the picture, he gave it, he forgave it, it's not the picture, and the only sum in question, even if the only sum in question is the Chomesh, for the Chomesh alone, he doesn't have to go. The cause for the story was you lying. 
but with Chaimish alone, for that you don't have to go, because the Chiyav is to give him what you owe him, the Karen, what you stole, but the, the trigger for that Chiyav is the Shvua. Interesting, yeah? Happens many times in Aloko. The cause is X and the result is Y. Yeah? What about the opposite case? The guy owes him, owes him a thousand for the Karen plus 200 penalty. The penalty, 200, I have right now, 200 shekels. The thousand, man, man, another time, uh, I didn't give him yet. And the, the guy flew to Thailand. Let's say he forgave him the Choymesh. He says, you know, the Choymesh, I forgive you 200. But the basic I need, the principle I need, says the victim, you stole a thousand. The 200, later. Let's say he forgave everything except for Shvet Puta. He says, Shvet Puta, give me. I'm principled guy. Give me a Gorot. At least you should feel he gave back something. I'm not Michael. The kids, there, all three cases means what? He still owes him Karen or part of the Karen. If what you owe the guy, the victim is boss, you owe him Karen or part of the Karen down to Ruta, then you have to fly to the end of the world, even if it costs you 5,000 shekels, a ticket. That is the first part of the Mishnah. And I prefer finishing the Mishnah, Bil Shuscha, and then I'll listen to your beautiful questions. I think he was before you. Nelson Loy Esa Karen. Here comes a very cool case. And now you're going to see how amazing I am in math. Unbelievable. Here comes the math. Nelson Loy Esa Karen, the Nish Baloy Let's say, listen to what happened. The person originally stole, listen to the numbers, yeah? The person originally stole a thousand shekels. I stole a thousand shekels? I swear in the name of Hashem Misbarach that Allah set the Torah open in front of Aaron Kaddish. I did not steal. And then he came to you the day later, crying his eyes out. Oh, I stole. It's just because my mommy never took me to Disney World only once a year. Such difficult childhood. That's what dragged me to crime. Oy, vay, vay. And then what? So now how much does he owe him? A thousand plus? Two hundred. Okay. And then you know what did he did? Nishbalo al-Choy and then the guy came to him and said, hello, mister, right? You remember the owe me a thousand plus 200 penalty? So it says the thousand, 200, no. I don't owe you any 200. And he lied and he swore about the 200. You get it? He swore about the choymish, about the penalty, the fifth. Now that choymish became the Karen. That became the focus of the show, right? Now the choymish turned into Karen. The, the discussion is they scream at each other, maybe you owe me. I swear I don't owe you the Choymesh. That's the point of the discussion now. That's in the limelight. Okay, so how much is yet? And then he admitted. Then he admitted. What did he admit? No, I do owe you the 200. I lied. How much does he owe him? 40. Fun. Hello. 200 plus a fifth plus 40. Now, you know what happened? Then he says, the day later, the guy comes and says, You remember you owe me 240? So the pathological error says 200 years. 40, no, nothing but 40. <laughs> now the 40, which was the fifth of this, became the focus. Now you have to give him a fifth of 40, which is eight. Right? Yeah? So now every time, the pathological guy, so every time the canon becomes a choymish and the choymish gets smaller and smaller, when will that crazy dance, this whirlwind, whirlpool finish? You know what that would be? When will it be less in Shveputa? When will it be less in Shveputa? In eight shekels, how much is a fifth of eight? How much is fifth of eight? 1.6. So now he owes him 1.6 shekels. 1.6, and he lied about that. Until they get to less than eight agorot, he'll always have to pay him a fifth. <laughs> Until they get to the matter of less than shvet pruta, that's when end, uh, 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 game is over. <laughs> says the Mishnah. Turn the page. A fifth over the fifth. Until the Karen, until the, the focus sum, the Karen becomes less than Shvepruta, less than the Agorot. Then it's over. Now, when do we apply that rule of having to pay a fifth plus, by the way, what else does he have to give besides the Karen and the Choymesh? Oshom, star student. Oshom to Beis Amikdash. It's none of the business of the guy in Thailand. The basic mix is not in Thailand, that's for sure. <laughs> he gives it in Eretz Yisrael, the ocean. That's besides the point. Those de that, that deal of what? Chomish V'Oshem applies to what? Not only if the person stole, the Chen B'Pikadoin lets a person was an honest guy. That's important to know. Even if they started in the right foot, I innocently gave to Ham Shmerl 
I gave you my thousand, my candlesticks, my thousand shekels uh, to, yeah, for safekeeping, right? For a few days. He called him, and then he lied to me. Although he started off good, but eventually he lied. He also has to give eventually Choymesh Be'oshom. It says in the postuk, the pikodon, the deposit, oy bet sumet yad. What sumet yad? A loan. Person borrowed money and lies straight in his face. He lies about the star. People can lie about loans, yeah? Sumet yad. And same, same thing. I just don't owe you anything. You owe him an extra fifth. Oy begezel. Or if he's told, it's quoting the postuk. Oy oshek es amitoy. Oshek es amitoy is basically keeping his wages, his salary. That's sadly very common. The person lies and says, I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. And then he owes him what? A thousand shekel salary for the week. Let's say young man. He owes him now. After admitting the lie, he has to give him 1,200. The guy found your wallet and you suspect him. Did you find my wallet? Did you find my wallet? No, I swear I didn't find your wallet. No, I did not. I did not find your wallet with the gold watch and the 5,002 shekels. <laughs> A friend of mine told me, story. I'll tell you later. The Kichesh Bo, and he lied. This is quoting the post, he lied about it. The Nishbal Sheker, and he swore about it. So we have five examples of different ways of money coming to the wrong hands. Sometimes it started off well, but eventually things soured when he, when he denied and lied. So then regardless how it started off, the mice said, you've got to pay. There was once a theft in the, the Tel Yeshiva. A friend of mine told me, I didn't know who stole. There was a gold watch stolen. So people were looking. They didn't even say it was a gold watch. They approached one of the workers. So he, before they even asked him, he said, I didn't steal a gold watch. I didn't steal. <laughs> okay. Um, a shlo- what? I don't remember. That's, uh, that's uh, sadly, and it's a discussion. That's why I said 200. I'm not sure if it's a fifth or a fourth, really. Yeah, yeah. It could be, by the way, Choymesh. When I said 1,000 and 200, I wasn't making fun of my math. I'm not sure it's 200, because I'm not sure if fifth is a fifth or a fourth. Because sometimes a fifth means fifth if you add it from the outside. So it's really a quarter. It could be 250. I just stuck to one example, not to make uh, some of us confused. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shlomo, yeah. Oh, the Choymesh goes to him. The Choymesh goes, it doesn't go to Beis Mikdash. So, yeah. Lamaise translates into coming to him. In other words, a good question, Shlomo. Can he be moichel the choimish? Good, it's a good point. The answer is yes. Although choimish is the punishment from Hashem and connected to the Oshem, but at least here, at this point, we see maybe it's a discussion. I don't know, maybe we'll talk about it in three days. Loyda. But Lamaise, I can hear, yes, at the end of the day, Akashbrahu said, you give the choimish to who? To the victim, not Stam Tzdoko or Beit Amikdush. If the victim is owed it, he can be moichel it. But it, it, I, like, I like the the comments. Rabbi Rins. I'm listening to every syllable coming from your mouth. Oh, I'm so sorry. It makes me feel guilty. He'll come ah, back to you. Yes. Yeah. Says the Heli Gemore. Oh, beautiful Gemore. Says the Gemore like this. Nishba loy in. Loy nishba loy loy. Which means, as I told you a few times, the only requirement, the high standard of having to go all the way to Modai, when is that? Only if he was Nishba Lesheker, then he has to make sure it goes very far. Loi Nishba, no. Let's say that I did not swear Lesheker, the guy was just a regular Gazlan, then I can, my, of course, I have to give him back the money. I can wait until he comes to Eretz Yisrael. By the way, that's another way of Shlichus, which we'll see later. I can actually maybe give it, give it here to Beisdin, and they will eventually make sure that whenever he comes, he'll get it. I'm not flying now. I'll give it to him when I see him, or if I happen to go on a Thailand trip in 10 years' time, I'll give it to his son without super responsibility. I have to give it back to him, but not with this crazy humra, making sure all the way to the end of the world, the Christ. If there's no shvua, then no money. Who is that? Who's the author of our Mishnah? There's only one of two options of who's the author of the Mishnah. The only two Tanoim who spoke about the standards of, listen to my definition, the standards of returning Exela. Yeah? How high are the standards of Gzela? Everybody knows about Beishev as Gzela Shergozo. If a person stole, he has to give back the money. The question is, how far do I have to go to be super extra careful that he got to his hands or no? Let's see. 
Says the Gemara, bad news, Akiva. If you read the following Raisa, you'll see that neither Rabbi Tarfan nor Rabbi Akiva, they do not they have a machlokis about this topic. None of them seems to be friendly, so to speak, with the Mishnah. None of them seems to be in line with the Mishnah. Let's see what they said, Bitanya. Listen to the following case. A person stole from one of five people. Five people, they all look the same. White shirt, black suit, black hat. You know, he stole, they're standing with their back to him. He stole from one of the five. He's a good pickpocket. You know, he stole from one of the five. They know you damn, he's a man. He doesn't know which one. To turn the faces, he doesn't remember, doesn't even know who he stole from. And what's even worse, the Kalachad Oimer, each one of them says, Oisi Gozal. Each one of them says, He stole from me. I assume there are four liars there in spite of the black hat. I don't know. But Lamaisa, five people all claim I'm the victim. And he says, I don't know. I know for sure he only stole from one guy. And they each one say, They stole from me. What do you do? Option number one, says you take the gzela, leave it in front of them and say, Bao, Shao, Gambino, you deal with it. In other words, I don't have to give more than the thousand shekels that I stole. I leave it in front of them. If that sounds too much like Wild West for your jungle, then join Toysmas. Toysmas says that it's not as, you know, as uh, figurative as it sounds like your mom put it on the table and say, ha, ah, boo. And let them all fight over it, you know, like the kugel, like the kugel in a kiddish, the last piece of kugel. That's not the case here. Says Toysvet, you leave it in Beisdin, you leave it in a nearby Beisdin, and you say, by Beisdin, uh, you deal with it. Uh, I only have to give a thousand, and I'm not saying to Beisdin in in New York, you deal with people in uh, in Tel Aviv. It's it's there. I go to the Beisdin that they're connected to, to their community, to their place. Says Reb Tarfan, that's good enough. In other words, Rob Tarfan's uh, level of return is decent, but not super decent. I'm not going to spend more money and start giving each one a thousand. I stole a thousand. Give a thousand available to all of them. They can all knock on the door of Basin and start fighting. And goodbye. Abi Akiva, email. However, Abi Akiva argues on his colleague Rob Tarfan and says, That's not the way to get out of Avera. That's not good enough to really be clean. Says Rabbi Akiva, the master of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he says, what? Each and every one you've got to pay. You stole a thousand? Oh, that's an expensive business. Because now, according to Rabbi Akiva, you'll have to pay 5,000. To each one of those figures, you have to pay one. And that's the only way for you to be clean from Avera. Meaning, Rabbi Akiva has very high standards of Hashava. You really have to make sure 100% that listen carefully to my words and now start imagining the Mishnah again. You have to make sure it gets to the hands of the victim, even if it means paying more money. Yes, you may have to pay five times over in order to make sure that the victim got it. That sounds like Thailand to me, right? Nachon, Rabbi Akiva would say that you have to fly all the way to Modai, all the way to Philippines, in order to what? In order to pay the guy. But that's not true. Says Igmore Mani, who is the author of the Mishnah? Uh, I'm lying to you. Uh, I'm not, not swearing. According to Rabbi the Mishnah for sure couldn't work. Why? Even if it was Nishba Lesheker, Rabbi never differentiated. Rabbi when he said, listen, listen, Mr. Ganov, leave it there, based in on the table, and go. He didn't differentiate between whether the person Nishba or not Nishba. Even if the person was nishba sheker to one of the five, same thing. Afal gavdishtaba Omar, still Reb Tarfan maintains, maniach gzela b'neim u'mistalek. You leave the gzela and you go away. In other words, Rab, in other words both Reb Tarfan and Reb Akiva did not mention yes, shvua or no shvua, right? So Reb Tarfan, who's super makal, would say what he says, even if there was shvua involved. Here be Akiva, I mean the Gemara now, and if you follow Rabbi Akiva, Afal Gavdi Loishtava, Rabbi Akiva is very strict, even if there was no Shvua, just regular, so to speak, theft, Omar, he says, Achi Shalom Zelek Olechot Vechod. So what's going on here? In other words, we do see the issue of our Mishnah, again, paying five times over can have two ways. Either you stole a thousand shekels and you have to fly all the way to Thailand and five thousand shekels tickets, in order to pay, you've got to pay a lot in order to be Mikai in the mitzvah of the Ashova, right? Or if you have five people in front of you, 
You have to give each one the piece of cake, each one the thousand shekels to make sure 100% gets them. One second, I'm just, putting, I'm just explaining the question. So that's all very nice. The problem is the Mishnah clearly differentiated and said, oh, when do you have to go crazy and go all the way and spend much more money? When is that? Only when you're Nishbal shekel. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. The Kiv and Rabtarfan are both extreme. Rabtarfan is always lenient and would never ask you to spend too much money to do the mitzvah of a shava. And Rabbi Kiva will always tell you to go the extra mile and pay more and fly more and do more. It doesn't sound like neither Rabbi Kiva or Rabbi Tarfin differentiate whether the Shavuot Sheker or not Shavuot Sheker. The Shavuot Sheker factor is missing from Rabbi Tarfin and Rabbi Akiva. <coughs> okay. Um, question, yeah. Get sidetracked. Answers the Gemara. La Oilam Rabbi Akiva. He really it's Rabbi Akiva. Says Rashi, between Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfan, we prefer Rabbi Akiva. How interesting this is, Erev Lag Bomer, because the Gemara in Sanedrin Pevov says Rabbi Akiva was the master of all the great ones. Rabbi Akiva is so big and so great. So if we can choose between Rabbi Tarfan and Rabbi Akiva, although later on we'll see it could also fit with Tarfan, we prefer starting with Rabbi Akiva. How could it fit with Rabbi Akiva? Says so Marv, very simple, in Ukimta. We pull the Ukimta card when we have no choice. You know when Rabbi Akiva had a very high bar of what? Return each one and spend more money? He only said it when the person was Nishba Sheker. A regular thief can actually, even according to Rabbi Akiva, there are five people who said, mine, 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 says the Ganev, here, it's on the table, or in Beisdin, bye. Even Rabbi Kiva would agree to it. But if the person, Nishba Sheke, whoa, that super red alert, this guy, he's in a whole different standard, we're much stricter with him, and therefore what? Then Rabbi Kiva would say, like our Mishnah, Rabbi Kiva and our Mishnah are one, and they say you have to give, even if you have to spend five times over, 10 times over, you have to give each and every one, or fly to Thailand, or to give to each and every person here, who are all suspects, not suspects, who are all uh, plaintiffs, you have to give each one. My time, eh? who said? You can't just make an ukimta because you feel like. Who told you that? Who told you in the Torah that only when the person is nishba l'sheker, that heightens the level of hashava? It says so in the Old Testament. If you read the whole posuk, the Pesach says outright, Mikol HaShor Yishava, Yishava, Olav LaSheker, Nishba LaSheker, Yishil Moesha BaLashara, LaSher Hu Lo Yitnenu, Lo Yitnenu, you have to give it to him, 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 only to him, you have to fly all the way to Thailand, no, Thailand, you have to go in a taxi, you have to go over the river, you have to go, there are big traffic jams of her that are over there, all the way you have to go, give it to his own hands, why? Because you lied LaSheker, which Shvuah? That is sort of unforgivable until you give it to his hands. And if you have five people suspects, then you please give each and every one. That's the story. And that's our Mishnah. So far, so good. If it's not really urgent, I prefer getting into the, yeah. No. Yeah, that's not the Kimta. The Kimta is the Nishbala Shekel. No, the Kimta is we're only talking about Nishbala Shekel. That's the Kimta. It's not such a wild Kimta because we saw it in the Mishnah. We tried to make it fit into the Mishnah and we have a Pasuk in the Torah. Motek. Ah, it could be. That's not because of the Kimta. That's a loch in the Mishnah also. Yeah. You mean the outcome that the Torah can be a million? Yeah. I don't know if it gets out of hand. I don't know if the guy's going to do it. Yeah, good, uh, good aura. Oh, what would Rav Tarfan say? Excuse me, there's a posuk. <laughs> if there's a posuk in the Torah that tells you that a nishba l'sheker has to give each and every one five times over, ten times over, how can Rav Tarfan say otherwise? Does he have a different limit than the posuk? What would Rav Tarfan do with the posuk? What are you expecting now, guys? Rav Tarfan is probably going to give us a different shot in the posuk. No surprise. That's my surprise, Poro. Even though he swore on the sheker and he does deserve to give each and every one a thousand shekels and lose a lot of money, over the abundant takanta, 
Rab Tarfan believes that there's a Takone. And that Takona is not like our Mishnah. What I'm about to tell you is the result of blood, sweat, and tears. What's the Takanta the Bonan made? Again, realize what's going on here. Rabbi Tarfan, let's just focus before we continue. Rabbi Tarfan says, Midoraisa, I agree with you, dear colleague Rabbi Akiva. Midoraisa, you're right. He should have, could have, would have, and should have give each and every one a thousand. However, the guy is Takona Soshovim. We want to be friendly with him. Rabbana, make it Takona to not fulfill that Din Torah, but be more lenient. Because we want to be lenient with him, because otherwise he would never give it back Bechlal. What's the leniency? And how does he work? Listen to this. Titania. Here's a Braisa. Braisa. Rabbelozo Berbitzadek Oimer. Takona G'doylo Itkinu. They make a great Takona, a great Takona for Ganev. Great Takona. Soon you'll see why it's great. I'm screaming. If the Oitzo, the expense of returning the actual theft is more than the theft. What is that, my friends? Either, either you fly to Thailand 5,000 and you only stole 10 shekels, or you only stole 1,000, there are five people, right? So let's say you have the Oitzo. My expenses are more than the actual theft. You give the Karen V'chomish to a local based in right near your house without traveling one millimeter, says Toysvus. And that the Mishnah never said. You take it to the local closest based in, you travel maybe just from Lachish to the based in in Luz, that's all you do. Meaning, you don't have to go to Modai, you don't even have to go close to Modai. If you live in Timbuktu, you don't do anything. You, or I don't know what you do then, you hope you keep it with you until you happen to be near a base in your next trip to Eretz Israel, which means that the Kona was that even if, <clears throat> even if the person is the Shakran, Nishba Lesheker, the Rabbi Tafrim believes that the Kona of Lesbo Sodoy, not like the Kona of the Mishnah. The Kona of the Mishnah was what? You do have to spend time and money going to base in. You, yes, may have to spend more money even going to base in. This Takon of Rab Tarfon, the Rab Tarfon believes in, is way more lenient. No, because there is no base in near you. I mean, I don't have to make sure it goes to Modai at all. I can just keep it in base in here, give it to somebody trustworthy, like an escrow account here, a base in here, and hope for the best, and hope the one day is going to come, and I'm already clean. I can go to base and mix dish with the Osham, and I get Kaporo. That's a grand Takono, much more than the Mishnah that said you can go to a base din, but you still have to pay more money. This Takono means no paying more money. I don't have to go into any effort. We want to accommodate to the people who are the Ganovim, because otherwise they wouldn't turn it at all. That's what Rabbi Lodom of Tzodik says. Imele says, Rabbi Tarfan, listen, just like I don't have to travel far, I just take it to the local base din. So too, says Rabbi Tarfan, if I have five people who all grab the money from the thief, I only have to give one, all of them together. You fight over it. I'm going home. Rabbi Akiva. What would Rabbi Akiva say? So first of all, Rabbi Akiva says, Toysfus does not believe in this Takon at all. Rabbi Akiva, Rabbi Akiva is who? He's the man of Ramishna. Rabbi Akiva says, you do have to spend money. And you do have to go all the way to Modai. And you do have to pay five people. Ah, you Rabbi Tarfan, you come to me with your Takon? No, says Rabbi Akiva. No. He offered Rabbi on Takanto. You know when Rabbanon made this super duper Takono of just being super accommodating to the Ganav, and he can just take it to the local base din or nothing, or just keep it until the Ganav, the, the, the victim comes? You know that's true? That's only true in the case of Thailand, of Modai. I know who I stole from. I'm aware <clears throat> that it has to get to his hands. Eventually, I will give the money to the man <clears throat> right now it's in my pocket or it's in based in, in a safe place and I sort of make sure every once in a while I, I know he's going to hopefully get there but there is an address. It's a question of time until he's going to come here ah, maybe somebody from base will go there he will be dealt with. However our case, my dear friend Rob Tarfan, is not the same. I spoke about a person who stole one out of five people. The Leman Gazle he doesn't even know who he stole from oi 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 then the money may never, ever, ever come to the owner, to the real, to the real claimant, to the real victim. On that, explains Rebbe Kiva like this. 
when we have the story of <clears throat> geography over here, of flying all the way to the Far East, then I believe, I don't believe you're right anyways, but even you and your Takana of Reblod Rathodok, you team, you guys were, let me just explain something. There are two teams here. There are two, not the teams of Yom Hashatz. Yeah. There are two teams. There's Rabbi Akiva and the Mishnah. Rabbi Akiva and the town of the Mishnah. Modai! All the way to Modai. And there's a little Takana, not Takana Gdola. If you listen to me, that's uh, that's a beautiful sequence of, of everything of Toys. There's like a, a mini Takana. There is Modai minus, you know? Instead of going all the way to Thailand, if the closest base to me is in uh, Iraq, Ah, fly to Iraq. It's not a thousand dollars. It's five hundred dollars. Okay, but to stay home and just give it to based in here and hope for the best? No way. That's Rabbi Akiva. That I don't believe. It. That's Rabbi Akiva and the mission. Rabbi Tarfan is the other extreme. Rabbi Tarfan says no. I agree with you. Lachatchila medoraisa. No, Rabbanon were much more makeal. Look, I have a friend. Rabbi Lozer Rabbi Tzadik is my friend. I like him. Says Rabbi Tarfan. And you know what he said? You can have a takana even with shekel. Can I have a takana to just sleep in the local based in without traveling anywhere at the comfort of your home? You know, like, you know, the gifts doko. You can give it either to the headquarters organization or give it to any of the collection points. Any collection point is good, says Abtafon. Aye, what's the argument with Rabbi Kiva Abtafon about the guy who, who stole from one of five people? Says Rabbi Akiva, Abtafon, hold it. Not only don't believe what you're saying, Bechlal, even if you want to give him this very nice humanistic takana, this humane takana, that I can understand when I know that the victim is Shmuel Zalman Kalman Yachne Ben Yente. I know who he is exactly. I know he went to Thailand. I know the story. We're being more lenient. And I tell the Shliach here in Beisdin, a guy with a white beard and big black kippah and a very big tzaddik, I tell him, listen, I come clean. Please keep it and try to make sure eh, as much as you can that it gets to Zalman Kalman Shlom and Ben Bench Prince. That's good. But five people, says Rabbi Kiva. That, that, that's cool. No way. You, give, you leave it on the table, or even in Beisdin, one out of five people, you have no idea who the person is, Michal. You, you have no idea who the address is at all. That, such low level, even your Takono would not work with that. That's Rabbi Akiva. So now, okay. If there is a question, then a quick one. Yes. By the way, we are in Kuf, Gimel Amud Beis, and we are a few lines before the end of the narrow lines. Start, soon we're gonna start with Macy. Line starts with Ruta Kanta. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let me just explain something I said before, we did not repeat. I was too excited about the whole place. I wanna explain something. The Takan of the Mishnah, does not mean if I live uh, in a place with no base in uh, Af Africa, yeah, and instead of going over to Thailand, which is thousand dollars away, I'm going to Eretz Israel, five hundred dollars away, and 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 keep it here in base in. Oh, it doesn't mean kept in base in. It means that give it to Shliach base in. Says this is will fly to Thailand because Shliach base will go back and forth. That's what it means. Okay. Now Macy Ravuna Bar Yehuda. Now Ravuna Bar Yehuda is questioning what we said. So far, all you have to remember is one thing. What did we say? There was a machlekes Rabbi Kibben Rabbi Tarfon, right? About a guy who stole of, I'm repeating a little bit now, a person stole of one out of five people, okay? All five claim he stole it from me. And he says, no, I stole only from one. What did we say? Rabbi Kibben Rabbi Tarfon, in case where, what did we say? It was regular theft without shvua, you put it on the table or in based in and say goodbye. I don't have to give more than a thousand. One thousand, which is the amount stolen, bye bye. You deal with it between you. Everyone agrees to that. When did Rebbe Kiva and Abtafan argue? When did Rebbe Kiva say, no, you have to give five, each one a thousand shekels when it was Nishbal Shekel? Nishbal Shekel says, Rabbi Akiva, there's a posuk that requires to give the person. Even if you have to spend much more money to make sure it gets the right address or the right hands, you have to do it. And Rabbi Tarfan said, hold it, Rabbi, there's a takono. I believe in the takono of Lozab of Tzadok. You don't have to be a strict. That was the machloka so far. A question on that. Rabbi Tarfan said, what does lokach mean? means took, and in old Mishnah means he bought. Let's say a person bought 
a gold watch, the same gold watch stolen himself, yeah? He bought a gold watch from one of five stores. And our whole jewelry in Belgium, they have a street one after the other. It's all gold and the tachshitim and the diamonds, one after the other, yeah? So one of the five Jewish mer merchants of the jewelers, he bought from one of them the gold and he did not pay. He was supposed to pay afterwards and he didn't. The Einadam is the Lokach. Now he does not know who he took from. He doesn't remember who is the one that he bought from. And they all say, you bought it from me. No receipts, no credit, <laughs> no, no, uh, did not leave traces, yeah? And now we don't know who, who he owes money to. Everybody agrees that in that case, he does not have to give each one, how much is the gold watch? I don't know, a thousand shekels? I never bought one, I don't know, yeah? So a thousand shekels, let's say. So he doesn't have to give each and every one a thousand shekels. Everyone agrees to that. And am I? Put it in front of all five of them in one room or give it to Beisdin and let them deal with it. And even Rabbi Akiva agrees to that. Alman Echleku, you know when Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfan argued and Rabbi Akiva heightened the bar and says, give each and every one. And you know when? Wide line. If he stole, then, then it's much worse. Then, Shabbatalfan says, you only give the thousand shekels in front of them and goodbye. Shabbatalfan says, you stole, you're a thief. Oy, oy, oy. You have to give each and every one. But Labatishli makes a lot of sense. Anybody would read this price and say, oh, such beautiful wisdom of the old rabbis of Israel. Yes, why? Because the first guy is really not a bad boy. He bought, he bought a gold watch and really wanted to pay. But technically, there was a trust issue there. He really came back and he got confused. And they got confused. Maybe they're lying, uh, if anything, yeah? There was confusion. Maybe they got confused because they sold it to many people. You know, all Jewish people look the same. They think, I don't know. Everyone got confused. So Misken, he's the victim of the circumstances. Oh, he, so Mimeler, Bikiva says, okay, you don't have to pay each and every one. But a ganav, a ganav, you have to give each and every one. What's the fault of this logic? So the Gemara now a beautiful punch. If you want to tell me that the whole story of Rebekah and Rebekah is when did Rebekah require the Ishtaba? If you told me, you did. You told me that Rebekah's high standard of giving each and every one and wasting a lot of money is the only when the person was already in court and ready nishba lesheker, lesheker, knowing, and, and then admitting, no, oy, 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 I did get the, the, the gold watch from you, and I will lie to you. Mali lokach, mali gozal. Who cares if he took it as a good citizen, he bought it, or he stole? At the end of the day, I don't say bad words, he's a dirty liar. He's mamish nishba lesheker. Then who cares about how he started? Right now, he has to atone for the fact that it's Nishbal Shekel and admitted to lie in front of Sefer Torah open. Ah, it doesn't make sense what you're saying. You can't say that the whole story of Rabbi Akiva is only when he's Nishbal Shekel, because then who cares if he started off as a good boy, started off as a bad boy? He's now a terrible boy that he swore Le Shekel. So it doesn't make sense. The Oid Mesivova, another very cool question, very out of the box kind of question. This question is very, very different to other Gemaras. <laughs> Story time. What does chosid mean? Rabbi, what does it mean hasid? Does it mean from bells, from gur, from breslau? What is, seriously, what does chosid mean? I became from two minutes ago. What a hasid. Are these people from Brooklyn with a funny, what's chosid? We have big scholars over here. They help me. A chosid is the person who goes above and beyond. Okay. It's important to know. I'm not I'm making jokes here. It's important to define what the chosid is for the hemshech of the sugya. Very pious man. He bought something, a strimal, from one of two people. And then he got confused. It can happen to the best of us. Chosid is his baidadus. He's high up there. He forgot who he bought it from. He came to Rab Tafan and said, Rebbe, what do I do? I owe money to what? One of two people. I don't know what to do. Omar Loy says Rab Tafran, unsurprisingly, you know what Rab Tafran is going to say. 
leave the money that you owe in between them, or maybe in based in more civil, they stall it, go home, don't sweat over it, says the Tarpon. You owe a thousand, get them a thousand. One of them is lying, one of them is confused. Let them deal, it's doing their own juices. Balifne Rabbi Akiva came to Rabbi Akiva. Says Rabbi Akiva, no, you have no takone, you have to give each one. There are two people here, you have to give a thousand to Mr. One Strimal Macher and another thousand to another Strimal Macher. Give each one, Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Tarfon, stick to the guns. Wait a second, again the attack. You want to tell me that this story happened? When does Rabbi Akiva? requires so much, only after, not just theft, but also Shvua, the Sheker. Shvua Sheker? Didn't Rebbe Messenger told me that the Chosid is a person who is a big tzaddik who goes way above and beyond? Frek de Gmore, very cool question. If you want to tell me that the whole requirement of Rebbe Kiva is only after those false Shvua, anybody in Shvua would imagine we are not Chosid? Maybe you are. I'm not so sad, such a tzaddik. I would imagine to be nishba l'shekher. A chosid mishta be chosid mi mishta be b'shikra. A chosid is nishba l'shekher. How could that be? The storyline is inconsistent. Yeah, here is a contradiction in a Talmud. Yeah, very good. It says the Gemara like this: the chitema. Maybe you want to tell me the mishta ba the adar ha the chosid. Maybe you want to tell me he did tshuva. Maybe it was nishba l'shekher originally. Then he did shuva, became a chosid. At he became super, super uh, big tzaddik. And maybe that's a story. Maybe you can reconcile, you know, and manage the whole plot of the book from A to Z. It's okay. It was a rosho, Ishmael sheker. Then he did serious shuva, became a chosid. Unbelievable stuff was going on. Beha doesn't make sense. You know why? That's big news for me. Whenever the Brisa or Mishnah says, or Medrash says, once upon a time there was a chosid, yeah? You know what he means? It's only one of two people. Wow. Whenever a Talmudic story is about a chosid, it doesn't mean Gur, Bells, Breslov, of Chabad. It means what? Only two people. Rabida ben Bava, Rabida ben Biloy. That's only one of those two. And continues the Gemara. We know the life story. They were Rabida ben Bava, Rabida ben Biloy, Chasidim dimi Korahavu. <clears throat> they were always Hasidim, they were always Tzadikim. So since this story happened to one of them, we know who they are. It's not a Chosid, you know, some uh, interesting figure from Baal Shem Tov stories. This is what? Specific Tanoim, which we know were always Tzadikim, since Bar Mitzvah, they were always terrific, amazing. And if so, it does make sense that one of them was Nish Baal Sheker, which is a very bad Avera. Yeah? So therefore, it does not make sense to you. Basically, we point, we now... We gave two big knockouts to what? You wanted to make me an Ukimta Baruch. You wanted to make an Ukimta. There will be a Kiva only requires to give to each and every one and go crazy and pay more money only when, when there's Shvua Sheker, I proved you wrong. And not be. For two reasons. First of all, if there's Shvua Sheker involved, why should there be a difference between if the person started off as a good boy who just bought a watch? So what? Afterwards, he's Nishbala Sheker. Who cares that it was good to begin with? Still, the standard should be high. Secondly, the star of Rabbi Yudam and Bava, Rabbi Yudam and Biloy, they were not Nishbala Sheker, honey. No way. So now the Gemara is going to change everything. El Aleoilom. We are six lines from the bottom of the page. Line starts with the Mikoro. Laolam of Talfoni. Really, the Mishnah is of Talfoni. Wow. Listen to this. Ooh. The Mechleika stays more or less the same, and yet it changes, which means. It's true, I, I'm giving introduction before the Gemara. It's true that Rabbi Tarfan says, leave it by them and go home. True, yeah. It's true that Rabbi says, you have to give each and every one. However, when this applies, says the Gemara, umoida bitafon hecha deishdava. The ukimta is in Rabbi Tarfan. Rabbi Tarfan would agree to Rabbi Akiva, that in case it was nishbal shekel, then Rabbi Tarfan said, well, then I agree with you, Rabbi Akiva. My timer, that you have to give to all five, Says Rab Tarfan, which means, which means, which means, Rabbi Tarfan says, Rabbi Tarfan Rabbi Kiva, when do they argue? When there was no Shvua. When there was no Shvua, regular theft, Rabbi Kiva says, regular theft, high standards. 
high standards, even by regular theft. And that was the story, or only regular theft, and not in the case of Rabbi Yudah ben Baba, and not in the case of, of thingy, yeah? Regular theft, yeah? Not in the case of, of Mecca. Now says the Gemara like this. By the case, according to Bekiva, if there was no theft, even then you have to give five times over high standards always. Kol sheken, if there was shvua. If there was shvua sheker, of course you have to give each and every one. That's Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Tarfon is relatively more lenient. He says, if there's no shvua, oh, no shvua sheker, put it on the table and run away. Only if there's shvua, then Rabbi Tarfon agrees to Rabbi Akiva and says, oh, shvua, of course. Oh, oh. Then you have, really have to give the each and every one. So why is there Mishnah like Rabbi Tarfon? Because according to Rabbi Akiva, our Mishnah is too lenient. <laughs> the other way. Our Mishnah says only when you nishbal sheker, you have to, really, nishbal sheker, you have to go crazy all the way to Thailand. Otherwise, no. Rabbi Akiva says, no, the Mishnah is not true enough for me, says Rabbi Akiva. I'm truer than the Mishnah. Rabbi Akiva would say, no. I say, always go to Thailand. Always pay five people times over. Because Rabbi Akiva says the standards are always high. Shrek the Gemara, why? Lichoy, we saw that the posuk that requires the high standard, that posuk was only talking about nishbal sheker. How can Rabbi Akiva, out of his own mind, decide that a regular Ghanav, that the Torah did not speak about here, that even he has to pay much more? And says the Gemara, Rabbi Akiva, Afal Gabdolo Mishtaba, Khanis, end of Shir. Even though, says Rabbi Akiva, he was not Nishba, Chachomim were koinesim, Chachomim penalized him and fined him, and he said, Mr. Yoganov, we're very happy you're not Nishba Lashekel, that's nice, you're not the worst guy. But since you ganev, you stole, you still have to spend money, a lot of money sometimes, in order to give the theft. You may jolly well go to all the way to where? To Western Samoa and fly with three airplanes and pay a lot of money there, even if you did not, right? Because it's a knas with the Rabbonon. And Rab Tarfin stays with the Torah. So Rab Tarfin is good with the Mishnah. Now Rab Tarfin switched sides. Rab Tarfin is friendly with our Mishnah and with the Poshuk Shat in the Torah. They say, no, only if the person was Nishba Shekel, only then he has to go all the way to the end of the world and a lot of money. But if it was regular theft, he doesn't. Then just leave it on the table or leave it in the local basin. Thank you very much to Mechavrusa. Bizchus Mechavrusa, together we managed to get this together. And I have to go now, but I'm, I'm hearing questions. See you, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. It's Hashem, same time, same place. And happy Lag Domir. Thank you.